as I'm sure you were, the Sacramento State study came out this week showing that the, the, the AB 32 regulations are going to cost the state's economy $180 billion a year and a million jobs when it's implemented. So if the state's economy tanks from, from these regulations, what's CARB's accountability? And who will be held responsible if the state's economy collapses from these regulations? Well, let me start out by saying that the study that you referred to was not done by Sacramento State. It was done by a private consulting firm that was paid for by an industry group. It had the name of a person on it who happens to be at Sacramento State. It is, it is not a Sacramento the, State it, study. It was a dean from Sacramento State University yeah. and a business professor from it, Sacramento it State was University not, who, who connected the state. Regardless... Regardless, could you answer the question? I'm happy to answer your question, but I was establishing the facts before I answered the question. I believe your question was, who is responsible for implementing AB 32? Okay. Who's going to be held accountable when your regulations collapse the state's economy? Um, my regulations, which are not mine, they are regulations that are being produced by the Air Resources Board and other state agencies, are not going to collapse the state economy. They are going to benefit the state's economy. $180 billion a year taken out of the economy is going to benefit the economy how? The uh, people of the state of California, when they um, supported the passage of this legislation, believed, as I believe, that by preparing for increases in the price of oil and the transition, the need to transition away from our current very insecure supplies of fuel into greater efficiency and cleaner technologies, they would be benefiting themselves both economically and environmentally. Okay, I have a follow-up. Runaway global temperatures. You, I'm one of the reporters that you complimented at the beginning of this. This is what you asked for. So I did. Here we go. I'm here. Okay. Runaway global temperatures and human-caused global warming, these are just theories. They haven't happened yet. Nobody knows if this is really going to happen. Now, these regulations are real. Do you even care that you could be devastating the state's economy with these regulations? You know, if I were running for office, I might be really concerned about these questions, but I'm not. I'm here as a, an official of the state of California charged with carrying out a law. I do care very much about the effect of it on the state's economy and about its effect on the state's environment. And I want to say a couple of things about the premises behind your question. Um, the first one is that I didn't make this stuff up. The measurements that led the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is a United Nations body made up of scientists from all over the world, to make the recommendations that they did about the need to control global warming come as a result of literally thousands of different measurements in the real world, data assembled over many years. It's not a theory, it's a fact. The sea level is rising, the climate is changing. The only debate is about what portion of this can be controlled or improved as a result of human activity. And there is a legitimate debate about that topic. But most of the advice that we have seen, the best thinking coming from our academic institutions and others, suggests to us that there is a need and a real possibility to reduce the growth of greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere in ways that could help to avert some of the worst effects of global climate change. It may not bother you that our coastline will be underwater in 100 years. It may not even bother your children. But it will certainly affect uh, your grandchildren, should you have any, and mine. I do happen to have one. Um, and it's something that I think we should be taking prudent measures to deal with.